In today's video, we're going to make a real working copy of a laser gun for Rick and Morty. By working copy, I mean yes, it will burn stuff. Okay, let's get started. I'm sure Rick won't mind if we repurposed this little guy, since he's not going to be doing any more time traveling, not since the incident. This is a Class 4 laser, which is the highest and most dangerous class of laser. Note that a Class 4 laser can burn the skin and cause permanent eye damage. I'm not saying do not try this at home, because you should totally own a laser gun. Just be careful or you're going to have a bad time. When you buy your laser, be sure to buy a pair of laser goggles while you're at it. And make sure that they're rated for the type of laser that you buy. You'll also need to buy a battery pack and a charger. Links to what I used are in the description. At the time of this filming, this was the least expensive 5 watt laser that I could find. The laser engraver is AC, but we don't want to have to look for power plugs on alien planets every time we want to fight the bad guys. You can certainly buy DC powered lasers with this wattage, but when I looked, the prices for an equivalent unit were significantly higher even after also including the battery pack and charger. Next we'll want something for the body of the gun. I'm using this canister of pledge. It comes in various sizes. You'll want this size for this project. While you're waiting on your laser to arrive, be sure to use up the full can, because we're going to be cutting it open here in a few minutes. We need more lemon pledge. Here's a diagram of what we want to do. The laser will sit in the top part of the pledge canister. The battery will extend into this top part. And the driver will be in the handle. We'll have one main switch to power on the unit. This is a safety switch, so the gun will not fire until the switch is on and the trigger is pulled. When the switch is on, the top LED will light up, letting you know the gun's ready to be fired. When the trigger is depressed, then these red LED lights will light up and the laser will be fired. To disassemble the can, pop the top off using a small screwdriver. Then sand off the paint so that we'll have a nice, shiny aluminum surface. Cut the back off of the can, and use force to push out the nozzle. Next, drill some holes for the LEDs. Bend the body of the bottom canister a little bit so that the cut off part of the can will slide onto it. Drill a hole into the back of that can to accommodate the safety switch, and then pop in the switch. Next, we'll mix up some rubber to hold the laser in place in the barrel. I saw this recipe on the King of Random. The link is in the description below. The directions are as follows. Dispense the desired amount of 100% silicone. Note that not all caulk will work. It needs to be 100% silicone. Next, add some water. Here I'm adding food coloring, and add some powder. Be sure to wear gloves and be in a well-ventilated area. Before the rubber sets, form it around the laser and then insert both the laser and the rubber into the pledge canister. Ensure that everything's properly aligned and that the lens doesn't get covered by the rubber. I let the rubber cure overnight. After it's cured, remove the rubber and the laser from the canister. Then coat the outside of the rubber with this glue. Use a heat gun on the glue for about 10 seconds and then reinsert the rubber and the laser into the canister. This will hold the laser firmly in place. If you use the quantity of rubber that I used around the laser, then you don't need to glue the laser to the rubber. Next, let's make the top chamber. Start by making a paper template. Note the battery is going to need to fit inside of it, so size it appropriately. Transfer the template to aluminum. Fold the aluminum. Use a metal brake if you have one. If you're using a vise, put something over the teeth so the vise plates don't mar up your work. And then drill out a hole for the LED. The top compartment sits on a pedestal. I'm getting that effect by using sheet aluminum from a soda can as flashing. Cut an opening in the body of the gun for that top compartment. We'll also be cutting a similar opening on the bottom of the can to accommodate the handle. Glue the flashing to the inside of the gun. I've temporarily stuffed the inside of the canister with napkins to ensure that the flashing adheres to the concave shape. Here are the resistors needed for wiring the green LED. 
The resistors protect the LED from getting burned out, since the green one is only rated to handle between 3 and 3.2 volts, but our rechargeable battery pack is sending 12 volts. We'll need resistance between 440 and 450 ohms. Hot glue the green LED into place, then wire up the red LEDs. Cut off the connector from the laser's driver wire and strip the wires. We're going to want to connect these to a series of switches. Hot glue the red LEDs in place and then connect the wiring to the main switch. Next, let's make the handle. It's roughly the same overall steps as the top compartment, so we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. After you fold it, but before you glue it, add a slot for the trigger switch. Hot glue it into place, and then wire it up per this diagram. Glue down some rubber, just like we did before, to hold the driver in place. You can add an access panel to the handle if you want one. Here, I'm just gluing it shut. Now we'll work on this second object. The purpose isn't really well defined in the cartoon, so I made it into a laser sight. This dollar store laser is the right price, but it's a bit too long to fit the desired dimensions, so let's hack it. I cut mine down a long axis on both sides, and then remove the electronics. You can desolder the spring, we won't be needing that. Now if you want to elevate your laser sight box to match Rick's gun, you can route your wires through one of these appendages. But note that the burning laser sits directly under this area, so you would need to plan accordingly. That said, I did not. I added this feature after making the main laser plan, so I modified the gun a little bit to accommodate it. The internal wiring looks like this. And then attach wires here and here. Attach the resistors and now your laser pointer is powered by the rechargeable battery. In the hole above the main trigger switch, add a momentary switch. Hot glue the momentary switch into place. Now make an opening to accommodate the laser pointer. Hot glue the laser pointer into place and then cram the resistors into the container. Here I'm adding a bottom to the container to give it more surface area for gluing to the body of the gun. I'm not very happy with this two-dimensional brass effect, so I'm going to use grommets to add some dimension. Now to cover those side LEDs, just mix up some clear epoxy and add some red food coloring. Now we need something to cover the unsightly wires behind the laser pointer. Cut a brass tube in half, and then cut a notch at the end. Bend it down. It should look like this. Glue it into place. Now let's finish the brass dimensional effects. Now on to the barrel decoration. Glue two sets of three washers together. And then use copper spray paint to paint them. Also spray paint the flange while you're at it. For the barrel of the gun, use this aluminum tube. You'll need to get a spacer which will serve as an adapter over the lip of the can. Note the tube will not mate up with the spacer, so you'll need to file it down a little bit. The spacer will fit on the lip at the end of the can, glue it into place. Also glue the tube to the spacer, as well as the first set of washers onto the tube. Use the same method shown earlier to make trigger covers and glue them onto the trigger buttons. 
I'm adding some trim to the laser pointer housing to cover the gaps. Once all that's dry, add the second washer set. I'm cutting up a magic eraser into three pieces to help keep the washer spacing while the glue sets up. Also glue the flange to the tube. For the grips I'm using leather from Hobby Lobby. Cut the shape to match and then use a soldering iron to create the grooving pattern. Glue the leather to the handle. For the LED cap, I'm using this lip balm container and then stuffing it with polyfill from the outdoor furniture that my dogs destroyed. So thanks dogs! Now on to finish the side gack. I'm cutting and bending sections of this coax cable for the laser side attachments. And then use metallic spray paint to match the aluminum color. To hold the end cap and the back of the canister, glue down some magnets. Here you see three on the inside of the canister, and I have three matching sets on the inside of the end cap. For any gaps, use spackle or wallboard joint compound, sand it down, and then paint it to hide the seams. And now you're done. Don't shoot your eye out, kid. So what's a laser gun useful for? I'm glad you asked. Is your printer giving you problems? Laser it. Too much laundry? Then laser it. One too many balloons filled with propane in your house? Laser it. Oh, that was a big one. Kid not keeping the room clean? Well, maybe just take away their allowance. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what do you say to the YouTube viewers out there? Like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so we can finally have a decent meal. And junk content? <laughs> <laughs> you were so committed to the junk content statement and then you just abandoned it. I'm so hungry, Father. <laughs> <laughs> you know what to do.